Welcome to the Daily Word for Pentecost. Today's reading is from the second epistle to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 18 to 22. As surely as God is faithful, our word to you has not been yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, whom we proclaimed among you, Silvanus and Timothy and I, was not yes and no, but in him it is always yes. For in him every one of God's promises is a yes. For this reason it is through him that we say the Amen to the glory of God. But it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us by putting his seal on us and giving us his spirit in our hearts as a first installment. This is the word of the Lord. God always says yes. It's been said that the image of God you believe in will radically affect the way you live your life sometimes in surprising ways. So what sort of God do you believe in? Is it a God who sets you free, or a God who binds you in chains? Is your God a stern judge ready to condemn you, or a loving father ready to embrace you like the prodigal son? When you hit rock bottom in your life, will your God be there to pick you up, or will he leave you down? Is your God a God who always says no, or a God who says a big yes? During Lent, I read a book called The Gospel of Yes. It was written by a Baptist pastor called Mike Glenn. In the book, he shares that God's most powerful word is yes. He outlines that from the very beginning of creation itself, God has been saying yes to humanity. Throughout salvation history, he repeatedly says yes to his people, who mostly reply with a weak maybe, but sometimes with a resounding no. Finally, in Jesus Christ, God says the ultimate yes to humanity and dwells among us as one of us. God said yes to creating a world for us to live in and yes to inviting us into a relationship with him. No matter what we face in life, the best way to live is captured in the one word, yes. Today's reading from 2 Corinthians tells us that our God is a God who continually says yes to humanity. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, whom we proclaimed among you, was not yes and no, but in him it is always yes, for in him every one of God's promises is a yes. Think for just a minute about what God's yes might mean in your life and reflect upon it. For many of us, this generosity comes as a big surprise. We are conditioned over the years, maybe by culture or bad teaching, to expect God to respond to us with a disapproving no. Paul, in today's reading, is reminding us that the God we see revealed in Jesus Christ doesn't expect us to pass a test or please him as a condition of welcoming us home. We are already precious in his sight, and he accepts us as we are. Paul is telling us that you don't have to satisfy God before he will welcome you, or that you have to make God happy before he will invite you in. God is already welcoming you from all eternity. God's yes was at the beginning of creation. In creating us, in calling us into being, God says to you and to me, I want you to exist. You are precious in my sight. And throughout salvation history, God continues to show this yes by offering his people the fullness of life, in spite of their constant unfaithfulness. But will God ever get tired of reaching out to us and saying his yes? Will God's yes ever reach its limit? In today's reading, Paul assures us that in sending his son who gave his life for us, 
God shows that his yes is a yes to the very end. If you give your life for someone, you have given everything, once and for all. As John tells us, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. It is this definitive, unconditional yes of God to us in Christ that enables us to express by our life a yes in return. That is why Paul says through Christ we can say Amen. In other words, our own yes to God in response to his love. The word Amen is Hebrew, and in Hebrew it means trustworthy, or so be it. And we say our Amen to God by saying yes to our fellow human beings, by affirming their existence in acts of love and kindness. I'd like to share with you a tiny prayer by Dag Hammarskjöld. He was a Swedish diplomat, Secretary General of the United Nations, and a Nobel Peace Prize winner. He died in 1961 in a plane crash. He left us this simple prayer. For all that has been, thanks. For all that shall be, yes. The prayer is only two lines long, but it sums up his spirit of gratitude and thanksgiving to God for all his experiences, both good and bad. As Secretary General, he had seen both the beauty and the horror of the modern world. Yet he is able to look forward to whatever the future may hold with an enthusiastic yes, and a deep trust in that ultimate yes that God says to all humanity. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is that ultimate yes of God, and the only adequate response we can make is simply, Amen, Amen, yes, so be it. Some thoughts for reflection. Are there people who have enabled you to live by their unconditional acceptance? Are there people whom you accept as they are and help to accept themselves? What enables you to discover the unconditional yes that God has spoken to you? In what different ways can we speak God's yes to other people? Let us pray. Lord, I want to say yes to you. I want to say yes to your love for me. May I receive your love. May I rest in your love. I want to say yes to your loving will for me. I want to say yes to all you would teach me and change in me. I want to say yes to you, my Lord and my life. Amen.